Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. Ten ways to make your personal brand future proof. Okay, we've just come out of one of the hardest time in entrepreneurship where brands and personal brands have been put to a test. And those that have done their work and those that are creating possibility for their clients are the ones that are going to be seeing the future. Now, in this podcast, I just want to set you ahead of your competition and you know, just help you get a head start in positioning and packaging and also promoting your personal brand in this growing online world. Now, one thing that you should understand as a coach or consultant is that your life story and your experience are what people are paying you for. You might have all those NLP um, or other advanced qualifications that you have. So does every other coach out there. What unique aspects are you bringing to the table? What stories, what experiences, what how are you actually saying that is different to every other coach or consultant out there? And if you package this all together, you wouldn't you would have something that is of greater importance to your audience more than you could ever dream of right now. And I know one thing for sure, you're here to make a difference in this world. And the best way for you to do that is to actually package your knowledge and your advice on any topic in any industry using your personal brand in order to help others succeed. And guess what happens? You now get paid to actually share this audience, um, uh, share this advice to your audience and create whatever information from it. In the process, you will actually start creating a lucrative business that's profoundly uh, meaningful and is actually helping others be do and have a happier existence. Now, in as much as you might not understand the difference between a company brand and a personal brand, I really want to get down to the nitty gritty of that um, with, with this podcast today. And I'm not quite sure what time of the year you're listening to this, but we're slowly approaching the end of a year, uh, the end of the year 2021. And one thing is quite clear at this juncture of our entrepreneurial lives, if you haven't been hiding under a rock, the personal brand is here to stay. Okay. Now you might wonder, Aren't personal brands something reserved for maybe celebrities or influencers, people like Oprah or Jeff Bezos or Mark Zuckerberg or maybe Elon Musk? But once upon a time, maybe. But now every individual is now considered or is already having a personal brand. And that personal brand is out there, whether you're creating it or you are not. You already have a reputation or a brand that people already know you for, okay? So wouldn't it be okay for you to actually be intentional about what you put out there in your personal brand so that people can get to know, like, and trust you? And you know why the reason why that is important? is because people do business with those they know, like, and trust, okay? So, you know, the only difference that now is in front of us is the entire world has access to who you are and your essence with a single search. So you really want to make sure that you are uh, influencing what they find when people look you up. You know, I think personal branding has evolved over the years from um, the time when the then Amazon CEO, uh, Jeff Bezos, referred to it as, as what people say when you're not in the room. It has now gone further 
and one, one notch above to what people see when they do a search of you on Google, Bing, or Yahoo, or any of the search engines that are now working right now. And I think by the time this podcast goes to air, Facebook would have also introduced yet another profile element, which they call uh, professionals, where your own online profile can actually start acting as a page, but still remain with the advantages of having a profile. So basically what they're trying to create is um, have people introducing their own personal brand out there in the world. And when I started this podcast, you know, I mentioned something that is very uh, important because your life story and your life experience is what you actually get paid for. It's not the alphabet soup that comes after your name on LinkedIn that people are in awe about. They don't want to know about that. People want your essence, your uh, your authenticity. How did you manage to go through certain uh, things in your life? Not what you learned in an NLP class or when you walked across those calls at a Tony Robbins event or concert. People want to know, how did you overcome um, whatever transversities that came in your life? How did you overcome all the hurdles up until you became who you are? And how do you live as a person? How do you... What does success look like for you? How do you define it in your own words? That's what we get paid for, right? That's what we get paid for. People don't pay you for the books you read. People don't pay you uh, for the knowledge that you've crammed or regurgitated from a, you know, a motivational CD or conference that you went. People want to know your story. So as con coaches, consultants, and entrepreneurs and some decision makers within businesses, all right, you need to embrace this growing online space and more and more uh, opportunities are coming to people that have created a personal brand than those that are hiding behind um, a business brand. Now, this is how people are actually generating leads because people want to do business with those they know, like, and trust and with people that they have dealt with or they've heard good stories about. And this is how people are finding the right employees or the team members that are actually doing amazing work for them out there. And if you want to go further, this is how potential investors become available to you. You know why? They know your track record and who you have been. They know they're not just, um, you know, spraying and praying with their money. They're actually giving it to somebody who knows what it is that they're going to be doing. And this is now coming because of how you've positioned yourself, how you've packaged your uh, brand, and how you're promoting that personal brand using the right channels and content that speaks to the unique problem that you are actually solving. You see, the thing is, with a lot of coaches and consultants out there and so many professionals now in the online space, it can be very difficult for you to actually cut through the noise or for you to stand out and, you know, bring out your brand amongst, you know, the digital market, marketplace experts that have already positioned themselves there. But that doesn't mean you cannot start. That doesn't mean you cannot bring an idea or projects or services, um, you know, to people that already are yearning for whatever problems that you're solving. But here's the thing. Opportunities are there waiting for you. But, there's, but, but if you don't have any track record or any social proof to support that you've got the knowledge, you've got the expertise, or, you know, you've got the, the you know, that know-how of executing on what you're talking about. Your ideal client or your, you know, in, in future uh, uh, prospects or your future um, uh, employees may just choose the next best thing that they see online. So I'm going to try and elaborate, you know, 10 simple steps that you can actually start implementing today that will give you a head start with your personal brand. You see, it's quite funny. Obviously, right now, you might see me as the founder of, um, you know, a fast growing digital agency, which is Live Long Digital. You know, where I'm helping, you know, coaches and consultants to explore the, the business growth and, um, you know, help them make sense of the online space that they're in. It wasn't always like this. 
You see, the reason why I'm passionate about helping coaches and consultants and, and small business owners grow their businesses is because I know what it's like to come from nothing. You might be starting right now with no credentials, with no credibility, with no one that uh, knows what you do and you don't have any testimonials or any support online. I was the same. In fact, I was even worse off. You see, I, I was born in a small town in Zimbabwe, in Africa. I don't know if you, um, you know, know where that is. And growing up, our life was pretty tough. It wasn't as hunky dory as what I see my kids experiencing right now. You know, in my household right now, we've got about sixteen screens, and each of us um, might have two or three at any given moment. You see, we didn't have a lot of money or hope that would amount to anything, and our motivation came from uh, what we called the center spread. That usually that was the magazine center spread, and it would maybe have a, a, a you know a, a big picture of a celebrity. And I used to rip out those center spreads and stick them on my wall, and that now became my motivation. Do you know what I mean? We had no one amongst us that, that we would look up to. And we actually had no role models to inspire us to want more, be more, or even expand our horizons. You know, up until I, um, my life changed when I was about 13 years old, when a bright eyed Australian teacher came uh, to the school that I, I was at. And she started informing me about Australia and all the incredible opportunities that it had to offer. I never knew Australia existed by then, but then now that it, it was brought into my, um, you know, reticular activated system, Australia now became the goal and the target. And guess what? You know, now I found all the you know, infinite possibilities that are possible, and I'm now here working hard to build that personal brand in order for you to reach, um, you know, your greater heights while we work together. Do you know what I mean? And the rest of my time in school, I was working my butt off just to learn um, as much as I could. And a few years later, and that was in 2011, which is exactly 10 years ago, I jumped on a plane to Melbourne with nothing but a backpack full of high hopes and dreams for the future. And I'm not going to lie. It was tough at first. You know what I mean? I was so far away from my family and friends and I struggled to get work and even pay my bills and was even evicted from my apartment that I was living in then in, in Richmond. I was in my lowest point, but I never gave up. Can you imagine, you know, being, um, you know, having the toughest existence in what was the most livable city in the world by then? But I kept remembering the advice that my Australian teacher gave me. And it was along the lines of as long as you're willing to work hard, there's always hope. You know, I, I, I knew I would succeed and I had to roll up my sleeves. And then I took my whatever opportunities that came my way that presented themselves. And whatever I was doing was enhancing my personal brand. Do you know what I mean? I started doing modeling. You know, and, and once I, 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 I saw that the models that were uh, in, in the space that I was in, that were not getting jobs, I created a platform where these models could actually start getting jobs. And my personal brand started growing from there because I now introduced these models to opportunities and other photographers. And how, that's how my personal brand started really, really growing uh, up until I got it, um, you know, involved in a restaurant which then gave me the opportunity to actually start exploring how to create and, and build social media uh, strategies, which now culminated in me working as a digital marketing agency. Um, so I just threw myself in this now line of work. And what I was doing along the way was just reading everything on digital marketing that I could get, a, get my hands on. So... As you can see from my story, I started from nothing. I had no alumni. I had no connections. I knew no one. But right now, I've got friends in high places. I actually pick and choose which clients I want to work with. You know why? Because I've crafted a personal brand that has allowed me the opportunity and the choices that I now enjoy. So one thing that you want to do is get clear. Get clarity on where you're headed to. You want to take some time and do some uh, introspection, you know what I mean, um, um, on your personal brand journey up until today. Are you clear on who you are as an individual? What are your core values? What 
what are your goals? Um, you know, what, what, what are your non-negotiables? Do people know what your boundaries are? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I always joke around this and say, you know, I, I read in my neighbor's journal that I've got boundary issues. <laughs> you know, but are you are your goals aligned to the person that you're becoming? Is your life story and your experience intertwined with whatever it is that you're doing? Because if you're not clear on who you are, how do you expect people to know what you can help them with or what problems you're going to be solving for them? And while you're there, just be hell bent on, you know, continuous education and really understanding your space. Because if you understand the unique value that only you have to offer um, to your ideal audience, you know, through your experience, your expertise and your education, then you can use that. You become dangerous because you and your stories would never be the same as any other person that's competing for your spot in the same industry or niche. All right. So through your brand journey, what problems did you actually solve and what, how do you do it differently or better than anybody else was doing the same thing? And the best way for you to actually make and create content right now is to find out what is it that you're struggling with or what are you actually embarrassed with right now and what have you done to overcome either it's a failure or a loss or whatever it is and then use that because that's what people are looking for. Anything that is unique to you, be a unicorn, different. All right. And once you do that, go above and beyond to understand your audience. Because if you identify your target market, it's so easy for you to clarify your message and determine what media to reach out to them on. Because once you have that clarity on who you are and yourself, you have a better understanding of what your unique value would be to exact person that needs to hear this kind of stuff. Because the only people you can help are people that are going through what you've already been through. So you have to start thinking about the problem that you're actually solving. Who is it for? Who is the right kind of person with the right kind of pain um, that your problem can actually fix? And get granular with that. You know, these days it's no longer about demographies as in age or um, sex or geography or location or whatever it is. It's now about a mindset. What is Sally going through right now that if they read your blog, listen to your podcast or watch your social media, they would learn to get out of that problem cheaper, better, faster. You want to get granular and very specific on who needs your product and your service and more importantly, where they actually reside online because that then determines the media that you're going to reach them out to. Right now, look at you and me. We, we, we in comunicado right now. You, mano y mano, one on one. And you're sitting right across me in my head right now. I can see you. You could be running. You could be sitting. You could be talking to or whoever or you're listening on this on your way to work or on your on your journey to do something. But it's you and me, baby. We picked each other out. This very moment we're sharing space. Because I understand where you're at. I understand what it is that you want. I understand you want to create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I understand so much more than you would understand what it is that you're going through right now. You know why? Because I've taken the time to um, maybe really, really go in and find out, am I the right kind of person that can actually help you be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable? Okay? Do you want me to surprise you right now? Do you want me to actually surprise you and, and let you know what I think you might be going through right now? Because one, I think you're spending a lot of time uh, sitting in your office or whatever space that you call your office on your computer and um, trying to figure out, first of all, your business, life, social media, your brand, whatever it is. Or are you spending the last moments of your pillow um, at night worried about how you're going to get your next clients or how you're going to pay your bills or how you're going to pay your staff or your employees? Are you actually starting to feel the pinch of the raising ad costs if you're already paying for ads on, online? Do you worry about the next lockdown? Do you worry that it's going to uh, take away the momentum that you've been building um, already? Do you worry about losing your clients because everything else is closed and everybody else is 
you know, has the stay at home, um, you know, uh, mandates or orders. Do you chase potential clients asking them if they have read your proposal yet or they don't quite understand what it is that you're selling to them? Do clients ghost you without even being honest about uh, they're in or they're out and they just never answer your call or pick up your call once they've heard your price? Do clients go with somebody who, because they're cheaper, right? Are you up to your neck right now trying to figure out social media or identify who your target audience is and clarify your message? Do some of your clients frankly not pay you either on time or even at all? Do you know that if you maybe took two months away from your job right now or your work right now, you wouldn't have a business to come back to? I know that one struck a chord a little bit because I know definitely who my who this podcast is going to and who needs to be listening to my stuff. And that's the reason why all my headlines, all my stories, every part of my journey is you relate to that. You know what? Because somehow, somewhere, we are all going on the same journey. I might have just arrived at that corner a little bit earlier. And that's the reason why I'm passing the elevator down so that you two can jump back up and, you know, be, do and have a happier existence. So when you know and understand your audience, it's easy for you to write to them. And that's why when you create an impactful headline uh, statement that includes who you are, what you do and how you do it and for whom people would say, yep, that's me, you got it put up their hands and say, yep, 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 that, that exactly is me. And this shouldn't be more than just a, a sentence, you know, it should be your lifestyle. People should relate to just seeing your Facebook post and say, you know what, this guy gets me, you know, like the things that I mentioned earlier, d doesn't that show you that I get you, you know? And if I know a lot about you right now, don't you assume that I have the solution to whatever you're going through? You know, because once you have all of this information about your target audience, you know, you put it on your profiles, you put it in your introductions. When you meet people, people get it because they're the right kind of people with the right kind of pain that your solutions uh, can solve whatever problems that they have. And you must clearly communicate your, your brand every step of the way because any touch point that people have with your brand, they should be left in such um, a, a manner that they'll be like, wow, if this guy is giving us all this information for free, I can only start wondering and imagining what it would be like if he, if I had to pay for this. So you want to make sure that your online footprint is, is at point. You know, you update all your online profiles. And 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 if you've seen all of my stuff, is it's I've, I've got professional headshots. You know, that's the first thing that somebody sees when they go to your online uh, profile. So you want to represent yourself in a way that you want to be addressed. Dress for the position that you're going to. If you want to be Batman, show up as Batman. If you want to be a professional, show up as a professional. And show that your profile has... Um, you know, that headline that I was talking about and a statement that captivates your audience and make sure everything is just up to date and accurate. All right. Because how you how people perceive you and how you do anything is how you do everything. Because if you can't look after your own uh, online persona, how are you going to look after my own business? Sorry, I yelled there because I, I wanted that to be of emphasis. So you want to utilize all these cool tools that we have and, and use them as a touch point to your business. And each touch point is a potential opportunity for somebody to get to know you, like you, and trust you. And like I said, people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. Now, now this is something that you also have to figure out. Okay, Google, who is Prosper Taruvinga? Okay, Google, who is Prosper Taruvinga? On the website jamesshort.com.au, they say, Prosper Taravinga started Live Long Digital as a simple agency to help small businesses convert and sell all leads coming their way. He helped businesses grow and maximize awareness, traffic, and revenue from both organic and paid search. To find out more, look for the link in your Google Home or Google Assistant app. Fantastic. That is voice 
um, search. So if you say, hey, Siri, hey, Google, hey, whatever, search for your name. Are we going to find that information there? So you want to start with a simple Google search for your name and then your brand and then the keywords that you want to be associated with when people search for the things that you are, uh, you know, the solutions that you're providing. And you want to make a knot of where you actually rank on Google and what links show up first. Because if you don't exist on Google or any of the social media media uh, profiles, you don't exist at all. You want to be aware of what others are seeing when they try and find you and, um, you know, you can make the necessary changes or updates. All right. So obviously I've got an unfair advantage because I work in the SEO space and I've made sure that, um, you know, my name is synonymous to whatever it is that I actually do. But you want to be known for something. What are you known for right now? Think about what you're known for in your industry. What keywords would you want somebody to use when they find you online? And if you had an opportunity to speak at an event, what would your topic or what would you talk about? All right. You want to figure out what your niche, because we spoke about identifying your target market. When you know what your niche is and when you know what those people want and you want to niche in a little bit more so that people would literally say, yep, 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 you get me. The more specific you are with your offering, the easier it will be for the right people to actually find you. And once they're in, you can then expand on whatever, um, you know, um, suit of services that you then offer. And there's one thing that I realized about the online space. Apparently, 90% of people, I mean, I mean, 90% of people come to the internet to get information. Uh, 9% of people copy other people, uh, information and 1% of people actually do the creation of content. You want to be in the 1% of the content creators online, you know, because if you're not creating content, then how else are you passing on your message out there? All right. It's easy. Just write down top 10 questions that you get asked frequently by your customers or clients and use this as a starting point to actually start creating maybe podcasts like this and content for your audience. And you want to just break down each question and decide the best format that's easy for you, either images, video, audio, or podcast. All right. Because let me tell you what happens with this podcast. This podcast, I'm going to, I'm sitting down and recording it. Right. And when it's recorded, it's going to be transcribed into a blog. And then, um, um, my, my team is also going to make this into a video. So we want to be found in different, um, you know, formats that we know our audience is searching. So you want to create and be able to share that content. And once you have been uh, creating and sharing, you just don't want to be on the receiving end of those comments, likes and shares. You also want to reciprocate that. You know, so don't just be a poster of your, um, you know, uh, social media um, information. It's called social because you have to interact with others. You also need to um, interact with your clients if they ask you questions, etc., etc. Comment, like, and share and connect with those that are seeking you out. Because it is a privilege and a gift to have people finding you online and even going the step further of wanting to connect with you okay so you know just start connecting with other people across all the platforms that you're on real connection can lead to real opportunities for collaboration all right you, the person might not be your ideal client but they might know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that has a problem that you can solve all right so there's always opportunities for collaboration that you can actually then quickly expand your reach and your audience and you can actually grow your online community out there and once you're there determine the media uh that you're going to be using to reach your audience on choose the right platforms you know i often get asked by a lot of people what's the best uh, platform for me to post my content or um, or what where where should i specialize my time on etc etc let me tell you something man 
wherever your ideal audience lives online. There could be on Pinterest, there could be on Instagram, there could be on um, Clubhouse, wherever you think they are. Don't just fixate on what the industry is doing. In other, in, uh, in, you know, if you really think about it, you need to be in places where not most of your competition is so you can dominate, all right? And find out where your people are hanging out and engage online and meet them there. Groups, social events, or whatever it is, just connect with the right kind of people who have the right kind of pain that your problems and solutions can fix. And once you're there, get familiar with the platforms and start creating uh, content that actually adds value to your community because we get paid in direct proportion to the value that we bring to the marketplace, okay? We don't get paid for alphabet soup um, of uh, letters that come after our names on LinkedIn. So when you create a strong personal brand, in addition to really promoting your thought leadership and your expertise in any particular field, let me tell you something, it brings back the human element that we're missing out in business right now. It actually allows for community and it allows for people to connect with you and it leads to ultimately having people trusting your brand. Trust is the lubricant that we need in order for money to exchange hands on the internet. That's how winning is done. So, let me tell you something. I may not know everything that's going to happen in the next years or so, but I know that personal branding isn't going anywhere anytime soon. And it's becoming increasingly more, more important, um, you know, with the growing demand of entrepreneurs, of employees, and even CEOs are branding themselves to have a personal brand because people buy from people. They don't buy from a faceless brand so don't wait until next year or the year after or don't wait until you're ready you are ready right now you've got a story you've got a name what is your name just get started start building a better personal brand today and let google do the talking all right whenever you ask who google is who you are on google there's gotta be a response all right now when you start working on your personal brand you will have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I can't wait to celebrate your success with you. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the live long digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au